Today, you probably had a meal that contains more than 30 grams of protein. And so what I wanna do is actually explore whether or not you can actually absorb up to 100 grams of protein in a single meal. Name one muscle that's trained by this exercise. Chest. True or false, your body can only absorb 40 grams of protein in one meal. True. So clearly he's wrong about this. And so what I wanna do is actually explore what people previously thought about this protein maximum upper limit. For years, it was widely believed that the human body could only absorb around 30 grams of protein per meal. Now, this idea stemmed from early studies that focused on how much protein the body could use for our muscle protein synthesis, suggesting any excess would be considered a waste. And it was assumed that after a certain threshold, protein would either be excreted or converted into other compounds for energy. Now, the main critique of previous studies, which found muscle protein synthesis didn't increase beyond around 25 to 30 grams of protein, is that these studies not having a long enough follow-up from the time of protein ingestion to gauge the anabolic response. So this belief shaped dietary recommendations and protein intake guidelines. However, newer research has shown that the body can indeed absorb much more than 30 grams and excess protein can still be utilized. So we'll be going into this recent science as well as what this actually means for you. So theoretical background of protein's role in the body. Now ingested protein is first broken down during digestion and the resulting amino acids are absorbed in the gut. While some amino acids undergo first pass flanctic extraction, the majority enter the bloodstream where they can be taken up by peripheral tissues. Now, once in the circulation, these amino acids can be used for tissue protein synthesis or broken down through oxidation. And beyond being metabolic precursors, protein-derived amino acids also serve as crucial signaling molecules that regulate both anabolic and catabolic processes. Of particular importance is the mTORC1, mammalian target of rapamycin complex 1 pathway, which governs all cell growth and metabolism and is highly responsible for fluctuations in the availability of essential amino acids, especially leucine. If you're someone that's been trialing different supplements and you're still lacking that energy, spark, drive, and overall vitality, then you may want to check out my brand new supplement that I've just released called Katwa Pure. Katwa Pure harnesses the power of a particular Amazonian herb known as Katwaba Bark, which has been used for centuries to boost mood, enhance energy levels, and act as an aphrodisiac. So definitely check out Katwa Pure. You can learn more by visiting inbeforesups.com. So the current research methods, this particular study here was titled, the anabolic response to protein ingestion during recovery from exercise has no upper limit in magnitude and duration in vivo in humans. So in this study, 36 healthy young men participated in a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial to investigate the effects of varying protein doses on muscle protein synthesis. Now, participants were assigned to one of three groups, a placebo group, zero grams of protein, a low protein group, 25 grams of milk protein, or a high protein group, 100 grams of milk protein. Now, the protein in the drinks were labeled with L1-13C phenylalanine and one l 113C leucine, which are stable isotopes used to trace the metabolism of amino acids in the body. Now, this labeling allowed for precise measurement of how much protein of the body was being utilized for muscle protein synthesis. Now, this study's aim was to assess muscle protein synthesis rates over a 12-hour period after the experiment drink was consumed following a whole body resistance exercise protocol. Now, let's have a look at what was found. The main finding is that there was a dose response increase in the magnitude and duration of protein absorption, muscle protein synthesis rates, and whole body net protein balance over the 12 hour time frame for the 100 gram compared to 25 gram protein ingestion. Now the figure here indicates that consuming 100 grams of protein significantly enhances muscle protein synthesis compared to 25 grams. During the first four hours post ingestion, 
protein synthesis rates were approximately 20% higher in the 100 gram group and 40% higher during the four to 12 hour period. The findings suggest that higher protein consumption can effectively boost muscle protein synthesis and support muscle recovery and growth, challenging previous belief that 20 grams was the optimal amount for maximizing synthesis. So what about amino acid oxidation? The study revealed that postprandial protein oxidation rates represent a minor metabolic fate, accounting for less than 15% of the ingested protein. This indicates that the majority, over 85% of ingested protein, is utilized for tissue protein synthesis rather than oxidation regardless of amount of protein consumed. These findings challenge the notion that excess amino acids are largely oxidized and support the idea that a significant portion of dietary protein effectively contributes to muscle growth and recovery instead of being wasted. Thus, protein oxidation plays a relatively minimal role in the overall metabolic response to protein intake. Now, what about specifically leucine? The study highlights the critical role of leucine in muscle protein synthesis and anabolic signaling. It found that the ingestion of a large amount of protein, particularly the branched chain amino acid leucine, increases plasma amino acid availability. However, this increase does not correlate with prolonged elevations of free amino acids in muscle tissue while leucine initially stimulates anabolic signaling within the first few hours post-ingestion, the study suggests that prolonged availability of leucine does not sustain ongoing activation of the mechanistic target of rapamycin, a key pathway that regulates muscle protein synthesis by controlling muscle growth and repair. So to put it simply, although leucine is vital for initiating muscle protein synthesis, its effect diminishes over time despite continued amino acid availability this indicates that muscle protein synthesis is more closely tied to substrate availability rather than prolonged signaling. So here are the limitations of current research. There were some issues with the study which do warrant a particular replication. While this study examined the short-term effects of a high dose of protein, it would be great to see the long-term effects of a diet with fewer meals but higher protein. We'll go into a few studies about this later in the video. The study used milk protein combining 20% whey and 80% casein, which is slower to digest, to explore how digestion rates affect anabolic responses, raising questions about other protein types. However, the authors believe protein type doesn't significantly impact long-term synthesis as digestion rates and amino acid profiles have minimal effects on protein utilization. So what are the practical implications and applications? One high protein meal or multiple? There has been several longer term studies looking at varying protein timing throughout the day. This study examined whether a pulse protein feeding pattern, protein mainly in one meal, was more effective than a spread pattern, protein distributed across four meals, for improving protein anabolism in young women. After a 14 day experimental period with increased protein intake, no significant differences were found between the two feeding patterns in nitrogen balance, protein turnover, or body composition, indicating that both patterns were equally effective for protein retention. Protein breakdown was slightly higher in the pulse pattern group, but overall the patterns had similar effects on protein metabolism in young women. A similar study with elderly women showed that the pulse feeding pattern, one meal having much higher protein, significantly improved nitrogen balance and protein turnover compared to the spread pattern. This indicates that as long as you're eating enough protein throughout the day that the timing isn't necessarily extremely important. So here are my final thoughts. I truly do believe that we can actually utilize up to 100 grams of protein in a single meal. And specifically, there's no need to be splitting this up across you know, maybe three 33 gram uh, protein meals per day. Um, I think that the main point here is just to try and hit your daily protein intake. And what I truly do believe is the, I would say, upper limit is about 2.2 grams per kilogram of body weight of protein per day. Any higher than that, most people don't tend to benefit much more. Um, and so I'd love to hear what you guys think on this topic down below. Leave a comment down below. Let's get your thoughts. And as always, if you haven't checked out my brand new supplement, In Before Sups, type in inbeforesups.com. You'll see my brand new supplement that I've just released.
Thanks so much for listening, guys. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.